indeed. Not so long ago, rows in the Labour Party used to centre around the union block votes. But today, the party leadership election descended into a new row over blocked votes. Several thousands of the new breed of registered supporters who paid three pounds for the privilege of voting have been told that they can't vote after all. Why? Because they're judged not to be genuine supporters. As you might expect, many are not happy about it. And, by the way, how do we define genuine? Well, our reporter Cordelia Lynch is in Westminster. Cordelia, what's it all about? Well, Matt, there's been a surge of people online today angry at not being able to vote for the next Labour leader, taking to Twitter to vent their frustration under the hashtag Labour Purge. Why? Well, Labour say they wanted to reduce the number of malicious or fraudulent applications from people who have joined the party in the last few months. The problem is that many people who claim to be lifelong Labour supporters have also seen their applications rejected. I spoke to one man who said that he's seen his tactical vote for the Green Party at the last election unfairly penalised. I am the sort of voter they should be trying to win back, a disillusioned Labour Party voter who Jeremy Corbyn is helping to win back to the party. If Jeremy Corbyn's the leader, I will vote Labour, I will support Labour, I will campaign for Labour and I may well even join the Labour Party, if they'll allow me. Of course, some of this could just be genuine clerical errors. Uh, that is not impossible amongst in a, in a political party that they might have made a mistake. Um, but there's too many people, it's been all over Twitter, there's been too many people in my position who have expressed uh, support for Jeremy Corbyn uh, or disagreement with certain elements of the Labour Party as it currently is, who have found themselves banned from uh, this election. But a counterbalance to that, I spoke to the Labour Party who said that one woman we spoke to this morning who was indeed very frustrated has seen her vote reinstated. In fact, all it was was simply administrative error. And it's worth bearing in mind that this is a party with less money and fewer people and exhaustive searches of the database or social media is near mm. impossible. Nevertheless, there is plenty of anger inside the Labour Party. One of the candidates' teams told me that they think there's been too much focus on union-affiliated votes and not enough on registered supporters. I've also got a copy of a letter Liz Kendall has written to Harriet Harman, which I've read, in which she calls for the full results to be published. She obviously wants to determine how important this issue of registered supporters will be in the final outcome, Matt. And what about this video that's emerged in the last half an hour of a Jeremy Corbyn interview on Russia Today? Tell us more about that. Well, Matt, Twitter ablaze with a new issue for the Labour Party tonight. This is a controversial video that's emerged in the past half hour where Jeremy Corbyn appears to equate the actions of ISIS with that of the United States. Here it is could actually shift the balance of forces here. I mean, what would it take for the Iraqi troops to regain control? Well, I think it requires a sense of unity amongst people in Iraq that would want to be remain part of Iraq and also an acceptance and understanding of why so many people in some of the cities in the north have um, apparently been prepared to accept the ISIS forces. Yes, they are brutal. Yes, they're, some of what they've done is quite appalling. Likewise, what the Americans did in Fallujah and other places is appalling. But there has to be seen to be an acceptance of a much wider view of the world than is apparent at the present time by the Malaki government. It's important and, uh, to note that that video dates back to 2014. We've been trying to get a response from Jeremy Corbyn's campaign team. At the moment, we haven't as of yet. Back to you, Chris. Thanks. Thanks, Cordelia. Well, with me in the studio is John McTurnan, a former political advisor to Tony Blair, and I'm joined from Cardiff by Grace Coles. Now, Grace voted Labour in the last election, but her application to become a party supporter was refused earlier today on the grounds that she does not share the aims and values of the Labour Party. And Grace, we'll talk about that in a moment, but John McTurnan, first, let's just address this video. Look, it's from last year, before he was in any kind of um, elevated position. Does it matter? I think anybody that says that the beheading uh, of Christians, that the rape and enslavement of young women by ISIS is in any way equivalent to anything the Americans have done uh, is really not fit for, for political leadership. It's a nauseating and amoral comment. It is of a piece uh, with Jeremy Corbyn's worldview. 
he, he, his whole foreign policy is anti-American. If he cannot bring himself to not drag down America in what he says, I'm sure his supporters will say hundreds of thousands of people killed by the Iraq War is terrible. And, and, and war is terrible. And, and, and saying both things are terrible is not equating them. He, he absolutely equated uh, IS terrorism, IS beheading, IS torture, and IS rape with a war. War is horrible. Wars should not, you know, should be avoided, obviously. But the United States and IS are not the same. Okay, um, Grace, um, let's talk about your membership in a moment. But I, I just want to ask your reaction as a Corbyn supporter to another story about something he said, which a lot of people will say shows he's unfit to be leader. Yeah, but he also says a lot of things that the other uh, candidates don't say that make him much more fit to be leader, I think, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about that. I mean, you're, you're, you were rejected today. Yes, um, I was, yeah. As, a, as, a, as somebody who can take part in this process. I mean, do you know why at all? Uh, apparently, I retweeted something by Ken Loach. Saying what? Or, I have no idea. They didn't tell me. I didn't even know who Ken Loach was, so... Um, they told me I either retweeted something by him or the party he's affiliated with. Um, I don't know who they are, but it was probably some sort of anti-Tory thing and I retweeted it. And you are wholeheartedly a Labour it. supporter right now? Yes. I voted for them in the last election. But uh, not, not the one before? No. Voted for Lib Dems because I thought Nick Clegg was better than Gordon Brown. And then I vowed to never vote for Lib Dems again then after that. <laughs> John McTernan, this is a mess, isn't it? If people like her are being excluded, why should she be excluded? Oh, look, I think the whole leadership process is a mess, but it's obvious the number of people who've applied has overwhelmed the Labour Party procedures. I don't think anybody is deliberately excluding people in some kind of... But this of, is anti-democratic, no, no, isn't it? She's there's, being there's, denied a vote. There, there's no process whereby people are being deliberately excluded because of who they're going to vote for or whatever. There were, there's a process by which people are screened, there's a process by which uh, they're contacted, and there's a party process for appealing it. Um, I think the numbers have overwhelmed the staff. You know, 180,000 people joining in one day, it's a very, very hard to process that. And I don't think anybody should take anything bad out of it. Grace, um, are, you, are you appealing? Uh, yes, I am, yeah. Uh, they were told they'd ring me back today, but I know they're very busy, so I guess they'll ring tomorrow. How, do, how does this affect your support for the Labour Party? Ooh, it's made me really angry, to be honest. And if I don't get to vote, then I won't vote for Labour ever again. You wouldn't vote for them ever again? No, no. So, so, <laughs> so your vote they... is conditional on being allowed, allowed back in? Yeah, because I think they've taken away my right to my say, um, and I don't like the way it's been done. There's no reason behind it, and therefore I don't really trust them, so I won't vote for them. Um, John McTernan, you can see why people are starting to feel that this is a stitch-up against Jeremy Corbyn. You've got all the party bigwigs coming out, now the party excluding people like this. Like if, Conspiracy theories will run right, won't they? If Jeremy and his supporters want to have this uh, election rerun um, with a proper scrutiny of everybody who joins the registered supporter, I'd back that. That'd be fine. Let's, have a, let's, let's actually stand this down. If Jeremy is now saying uh, that this, this whole contest is biased against him, I mean, it's, it's contrarian beyond even the point that he normally is. Okay, uh, John McTernan and Grace Coles, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.